Okay, everybody, so we got through part one of the glomerulonephritides, and now we are ready to move on to part two. And fortunately, this part is going to be a little bit shorter. Now, in part one, we talked about the glomerulonephritides uh, that are associated with systemic signs, so things like uh, GPA, EGPA, which I still miss calling Wagner's and Schergstrauss. Um, and now we're going to be talking about um, diseases that only affect the kidneys, okay? So things like minimal change disease. If you haven't had the chance yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. You can get there by clicking the link in the description of the video or on the I button in the upper right hand corner. I very much appreciate all the contributions that I can get to help offset the cost of these videos. And I thank all those of you who have already donated. And definitely feel free to subscribe to my channel and you'll get notifications as I put more and more videos up. Okay, so we're going to start out with the uh, renal disorders uh, that have normal complement. So these are all glomerulonephropathies that have normal complement. And by the way, it would help to just remember the ones that have low complement and then the rest start because there's not that many. Okay, so IgA nephropathy is characterized by recurrent painless hematuria commonly immediately after an upper respiratory tract infection or gastroenteritis. Now, this is different from henoxurin line purpura. Henoxurin line purpura is IgA mediated. It can cause renal failure pretty much identically, but henoxurin line purpura will have the rash and it'll have the abdominal pain um, that does not come with just IgA nephropathy. Okay, so um, it's very important to distinguish IgA nephropathy from post streptococcal or post infectious glomerulonephritis uh, because you will have similar symptoms, but the difference is that post strep is going to present weeks after the infection, whereas IgA nephropathy will present within days after the infection. There are other ways that you can go about differentiating this too, um, as you'll see when we get to uh, post streptococcal glomerulonephritis. Now, unlike IgA vasculitis or henoxurin line purpura, there will not be a rash and there will not be systemic signs. These are very related disorders. Um, the difference is IgA nephropathy is just kidney, whereas henoxurin line purpura may be kidney, but it's all these other things too, okay? You should always consider this in a patient with gross hematuria who is currently having or has very recently had an infection. Symptoms here, hematuria, um, they can have proteinuria, but rarely it's in the nephrotic range. Um, diagnosis here, the only definitive way is a kidney biopsy. Um, I mean, you can try your best to eliminate other things, look at the history, and you can probably get to a diagnosis. But there's really no test that's going to say, okay, yeah, this is IgA nephropathy. Um, but So you can heavily suspect it. Another thing that's going to help you too is to look at the complement. Okay, the complement in IgA nephropathy is normal. What's the other thing that I mentioned sounds kind of like IgA nephropathy? Post-strep glomerulonephritis. What's the complement level in post-strep glomerulonephritis? It's going to be low. Okay, so that's one of the ways you can differentiate between the two aside from just the history. Uh, if they have proteinuria or hypertension, we give ACE inhibitors. Otherwise, we can just observe um, a minority, but a pretty large minority, do go on to end-stage renal disease. Okay, minimal change disease. This is classic step one stuff. This is idiopathic. It is a disorder of the glomerular foot processes, which play, play a very important role in preventing protein from getting into the filtrate. Um, so this is invariably char characterized by nephrotic syndrome. So these patients will be highly edematous. They will tend to be hypertensive, and we don't expect to see that in a little kid. Okay, so you got a kid coming in who's all edematous and running 150 over 90, uh, that's a problem. And so you're probably thinking, okay, let's get a urinalysis and then you see a ton of protein. That's minimal change disease. It is the most common cause of nephrotic syndrome in children. It occasionally occurs in adults, but if you have a picture that looks like that in an adult, you should think membranous glomerulonephritis. Symptoms here, edema, especially facial edema, is kind of the first place it shows up in kids, sluggishness and fatigue. 
Best initial test is a 24-hour urine protein. Assuming you've gotten your urine analysis, you'll see nephrotic range proteinuria. Um, if you do suspect minimal change disease, the only way to definitively diagnose it is to get a renal biopsy. If you get an electron microscopy, you will see the fusion of the foot processes. That's pathognomonic for minimal change. However, if you just did light microscopy, you won't see any changes. That's where it gets the name, minimal change disease, minimal changes on light microscopy. The treatment here is prednisone, salt and fluid restriction. This is generally temporary. It goes away. Uh, diuretics and prednisone are going to be reserved for severe edema. And I'm talking here, they have shortness of breath because they have pulmonary edema. Focal segmental glomerulosclerosis is a nephrotic syndrome associated with scarring of the glomeruli. This is the leading cause um, in blacks. So, you know, I hate saying that because, I mean, it, it is, it's true. Uh, but, you know, you run into these sort of stereotypes, and the USMLE loves stereotypes. So, begrudgingly, I put it here. Um, if you hear black man with HIV now has proteinuria, um, or black man with a history of IV drug use now has proteinuria, um, you should be thinking FSGS. Okay, in practice, probably, uh, you know, maybe should have a wider differential, but on your exam, that's kind of how it goes. Um, it does account for the majority of nephrotic syndromes in African Americans, though. It can be spontaneous, i.e. genetic, uh, and this is a genetic defect to the foot processes, or it can be secondary, often in that case, it's associated with HIV, hepatitis B, or heroin use. Symptoms, it looks like minimal change disease. It's just in a grown-up. Your analysis will show significant proteinuria. You can also see those waxy casts. The treatment, prednisone may be tried, but it's not always effective, certainly not to the degree that it's effective in children with minimal change disease. Okay, now we'll go through these last two. Okay, post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis, so mouthful. PSGN or PIGN, you may see it. It's the same thing. Um, this is characterized by gross hematuria in the weeks following an inadequately treated infection. Unlike what? Unlike henoch schönlein purpura, uh, which will come within days of, uh, of, of the infection. Okay, so although it's now called post-infectious glomerulonephritis, about 90 to 95% of these cases do originate from a strep infection. But there are other possible causes, so they changed the name. The giveaway here is that you have a kid, really young, maybe five or six years old, had strep throat a few weeks ago, mom didn't take him in, and now he woke up this morning and his urine is brown. What's going on? That is usually the chief complaint. However, about 65 to 90% of these patients will also have some degree of edema or hypertension. It just so happens that those aren't really things that parents are looking at. I mean, nobody's putting their seven-year-old on a blood pressure cuff every day, right? So um, it's usually going to be a chief complaint of dark urine. Best initial test is an ASO or an anti-DNA uh, titer. So look for these two. That's your best initial test. These will come back positive. You pretty much nailed down your diagnosis. Another thing you can look at is complement. Complement will be low, unlike IgA nephropathy, which presents very similar. Um, IgA nephropathy can also uh, happen after an infection. But remember, IgA nephropathy tends to happen within days after an infection, whereas this can be more protracted weeks after an infection. Treatment here is supportive. However, if they, if they do have uh, high fluid status, um, go ahead and give them furosemide. But be gentle. These are children. Okay, membranoproliferative glomerulonephritis, which I hate saying because it's like 15 syllables. Um, this is pretty rare. Um, this doesn't come up too much, um, especially on exams, uh, but what you should be aware of is that this is another potential cause of, uh, of a nephritic or a nephrotic syndrome. Um, it is idiopathic, uh, but it, one of the big things is that it is one of these glomerulonephropathies that can cause low complement. Okay, so remember some of the other ones, cryoglobulinemia, lupus nephritis, post-strep. This is the fourth big one. It is associated with hepatitis C, but not always, okay? But on exam, look for a patient with hepatitis C who's now uh, edematous and hypertensive and peeing out blood. 
Um, so that's what your labs will tell you. The treatment is controversial. That's probably why it doesn't come up too much. Prednisone can be effective in children, but not so in uh, much in adults. Again here, because this is associated with so many secondary causes, including hepatitis and, uh, and autoimmune disorders, you should uh, work the patient up for that because if you can find out the underlying cause and you treat it, this can get a lot better. Okay, so this is just for you here. Um, so if you have a patient with severe nephrotic syndrome, they're hypertensive, they're swollen, short of breath, um, high lipid panel, all the stuff you'd expect to see with, uh, with nephrotic syndrome, um, you can look at who the patient is. If they're a poorly controlled diabetic, think diabetic nephropathy. If they're a kid, think minimal change disease. If they're a white adult, think membranous nephropathy. If they're a young woman with constitutional signs, think lupus. If they're black or IV drug user or HIV positive, think FSGS. And if they have hep C, think membranoproliferative glomerulonephritis. Okay, and this is a recap of everything we talked about in both of these videos.